Yo, what's up guys, Nash here coming at you with a brand new video and today we're talking about how to actually price your products because a lot of times I see either people are number one, undercharging and not making enough money off of it or breaking even or even worse, losing money or the second way is they're just overcharging and they're not making any sales at all or very few sales or not as many sales as they should be making. Both cases, not a good situation to be in. So how do you actually go about doing research and finding the right price for your product? That's what we're talking about today. So let's dive in. All right guys, so before we dive in, how about you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It helps me out a lot. Also hit a like on this video because that lets me know that you like this content and you want me to keep dropping it every day. I know I missed yesterday and I'm super sorry. My camera was jacked. And uh, but yeah, now we're back in action. So go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, let's jump in. Let's go over how to actually price your products. Now, to me, there's like five different steps um, that I like to go through when I'm actually going ahead and uh, pricing my products. So the first one, uh, let me just jump over a line, is to just look at major retailers, okay? This is probably the most obvious, but this is also something that I see so many people not doing, is they don't go to the Amazons, the Walmarts, the Targets, all these different places and see how much they're actually charging, right? Because if Walmart is charging $20 for, you know, say, here, let's just do a real example. Um, so I've, I've pulled up this rose necklace here on AliExpress, as you can see, $1.63, $2.11 for Shipping, so all in, you're at about $3.75, somewhere around there, right? $3.75. Now, I also went over to Amazon, I just typed in rose necklace, and here you see a bunch, like this one's very similar, selling for $9, uh, you know, almost 10, this one's 15, uh, 23, 27, these ones are a little more expensive, not sure why, but as you can see, only 12 orders, two orders, how many do these have? Um, 15, doesn't, doesn't say too many. Um, but yeah, anyways, so you can look at Amazon or even Walmart and get an idea for how much these are selling for. You know, you can see that, like, for the example, this one is $27 and there's only two sales. I wonder if that's because of the price, if that's because of the product, could be a couple different things, but I would recommend just going in and actually checking what they're, they're charging. So based on these prices, I would probably want to charge somewhere in the 10 to $15 range. Now. I know a lot of you guys might be doing a free plus shipping offer. So in that case, you know, you would also probably want to charge around 10, nine to $10 for free plus shipping. If you're doing a retail price, you probably want to do maybe 10 to 15, but do it as a discount. So maybe was 20 and now it's 15 or is 10, whatever you want to do. Okay. Number two is to look at the competition. Now, if you've been following any of my other videos and you would know that what I love doing and what you should be doing if you're doing uh, you know, product research the right way and the smart and efficient way is that you should be looking at your competition and seeing who's promoting on these pages that you're looking at promoting on or are promoting on. And what you really need to do is just look at the competition and then just click on the link in their bio and then look at their website, see what they're charging for things. And then you can even do test orders, see what they're charging for shipping. If it's a free plus shipping offer, see what they're charging for shipping or if it's not, still see what they're charging for shipping, but also what they're charging for retail. Um, you know, that's just a, a thing that I like to do is just to look at the competition because then if you know somebody's charging 15 for that rose necklace, now you can be like, all right, I'll charge like 14 or 13. Just get a little bit of an edge on them and you'll get more sales. Okay, number three, and this is uh, oftentimes the most important thing, is that you want to establish a value gap, okay? And what I mean by this is basically there has to be an expectation for how much something should cost. So say somebody sees uh, you know, that necklace, they see it at Walmart for $15, right? So, or, or let's, let's do 20. So they see it at Walmart for $20. They expect that that product should be $20. So when they see it online, they're not gonna pay $20 to do it. Why would they? You know, Why would they wait two weeks when they could just go to Walmart and get it for $20? So what you have to do is create what's called a value gap. There's gotta be some sort of incentive for them to actually purchase. So what we could do instead of um, you know selling it for 20, we could sell it now for 10. And what they do is they see, oh wow, that product used to be 20, but these people are selling the same exact thing for 10. That must be a great deal. Let me go and jump on it. Now your website has to be congruent, you know, other factors as well. But when you establish a value gap, you have a much better chance of getting customers because they see it's one price and they also uh, somewhere else and they see that it's a low price 
on your website so there's just like a much better chance that they're actually going to purchase something so this one is also huge and i think a lot of people do it and it affects conversions like on a massive level um but it's never charge twice for the same product okay and what do i mean by this basically a lot of times i see people charging one for the product and two for the shipping or they might even throw like tax in there which you really shouldn't even be charging tax unless the person is purchasing in your your home state um, if you're in the u.s international i don't know so i don't want to give any advice on that but um i usually just eat the sales tax because a lot of people don't purchase in hawaii and you know it's not really a big deal if they do then you know it's a couple cents but never charge your customer twice so either charge for retail, which is like the price of the product, or charge for shipping, which would be a free plus shipping offer, um, never both, okay? Because just think about it, you go to Amazon and you see a product, you're like, oh sweet, $29.99, that's a great deal, but then it's like, you know, $6 shipping, and you're like, I don't know if I want this anymore, because it's just, a non it looks like an unnecessary cost, right, when you have both. If you do a free plus shipping, at least that's only one cost, and it's more justifiable, but if you have two, it just, it's kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people. So, never charge twice. Um, let's see, how do we, there we go. The last one is, and this is just the most obvious thing, but you gotta test things, and so many people, you know, they'll do one product, and they'll charge like you know $15.99 for it or whatever and then they'll never test other prices me personally what i like to do especially when i'm in the testing phase is i'll i'll run a promotion and depending on how it goes if it's doing well then you know i might not switch it too much but if it's not doing as well as i think it should then i might change the price two or three times throughout the entire promotion that's you know 12 or 24 hours whatever it is um so you really want to be testing the prices and seeing what works best for me for some reason, I, when I was charging 1097 shipping, it was converting well, but it didn't convert as well as when I charged 1027 shipping. I have no idea why, it's a 70 cent difference, it's not that big of a deal. But I think uh, there's a combination between uh, 1097 as sort of a retail price, um, you know, something that you'd see on a shelf, and it's a little bit more unreasonable for shipping, whereas like 1027 is kind of a random number, and I guess, I don't know, maybe people can justify that in their mind as being a, a decent amount for shipping. Plus it's just closer to $10 than 1097 is, that's closer to 11, and $11 for shipping is kind of on the high side, so I don't know. But moral of the story is you just gotta test. You gotta test all the time, always be testing, and uh, you know, eventually you'll find a sweet spot after maybe two or three promotions, you'll find what's working for you and then you can roll with it from there. So hopefully these tips were helpful for you guys. If they were, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also give me a like um, because that lets me though know that you actually like this information uh, and you want me to keep doing it on a daily basis. Lastly, let me know in the comments below what you're struggling with. I've had a lot of DMs lately, people asking, you know, about products, about niche research, about, you know, what they should do with their website, website reviews. I'm starting to do those as well. So if you have any questions or you want me to check out your website, go ahead and DM me at Nash Hagen on Instagram and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Always responding to people, love helping you guys out. So again, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.